Welcome to tonight's performance, Act One. Look, Miss Janet, look what I did. What do you think? Oh, that R is beautiful. I mean, this is so boring. I taught you better than this. Get that out of my face. Now come back with something decent. Oh, man, I can't believe she didn't like it. All right, so how can I make that pop? I think I got it. I'm gonna make a puff sublimated hat so that she's gonna see how it's gonna pop. Remember to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content that we are creating today. Also, hit the notification bell. So I'm gonna add some puff to it, and on top of that, I'm gonna put the sublimated brick pattern right on top of it so we still get that Rakoma orange instead of using the orange thread. I think that's gonna be really cool. Yeah, that's gonna pop. Let's go make this. In the beginning, we do the regular satin stitch. You're gonna notice it starts with this part, and this is called the underlay. The underlay gives a structural support to the base structure to your substrate in order to lay the satin on top of it. So in this case, it's gonna do the satin all over it. Remember, we did the underlay. I'm gonna speed this up just a little bit. Now that we have our design all done, we're gonna convert this to a puff design. The way we're gonna do this is we're gonna remove the underlay. So I'm just gonna click on every single element and remove the underlay. I could select the whole thing and remove the underlay, but I kinda like to do it one piece at a time to make sure that everything gets removed. So if I click on this part of the design, you'll notice that if we go to the underlay tab, there's a parallel underlay on it. And if you hover over, it's gonna say underlay. There it is. So if I uncheck that and click apply, now the underlay is no longer there. I'm going to hit my second element, remove the underlay and click apply, hit the third, remove the underlay, apply. And finally around the border, we're gonna remove the underlay. The reason we remove the underlay for puff is because the underlay is going to pre-compress the puff and we don't want that. All we want are the threads to go over the puff so that it creates that nice puffy look, right? The 3D look. If you put the underlay, you're just smashing the puff down and it's not gonna work. So now that I have removed it, I want you to see the difference between the first one that we did and the second one. When you do puff embroidery, you want to cap these ends off because if this was a knife, the stitches are gonna cut the foam across this edge. However, since no stitches were made here, it's not gonna cut the puff. So I'm going to unhide my little icons there or my little uh, puff lines. Let me just hide everything so you can see what they look like. So everywhere that the satin stitch ends across the long side of the satin stitch, I'm gonna make a little cap right underneath it so that that pre-cuts the foam so that when the regular satin stitch goes on top of it, like this, now it's gonna cut the foam. So let's replay that again. Beautiful. So we're gonna go ahead and replay that again. So now you'll notice that it's gonna make those little caps first. And what these are gonna do is you're gonna cut the tip of the foam so that when the regular satin goes over it, it's already cut and you don't have to worry about taking it out. So anytime you're doing satin, always remember to put the caps. The reason we don't put a cap here is because when this satin stitch is applied, it's automatically gonna cut it right there. So it's we don't need to do that. Only on the exposed ends do we need to put the little caps. So here we go, I'm just gonna let it play. You notice it's just gonna do the satin stitch, no underlay, because we want that puff to be nice and bouncy. Oh, look at that, you see, that's why we do it individually. It did not remove the underlay from here. I must not have pressed apply. So I'm gonna pause that for a second, go to my selector tool, select that part, go back to the underlay, remove, hit apply. And now let's see that again. 
we're gonna go. And this is why I tell you always test and use this feature to see exactly what it's gonna look like and how the stitches are gonna behave. So there we have our caps, we have our satin stitch, and we have our border. Notice no underlay. That is a little tack down stitch to keep the foam in place, but that's all you need. Excellent guys. Now go make some hats. I just did detach the file and we're gonna put it on the machine and run it. But we're gonna do it with white thread so that we can sublimate over the white thread. Remember for sublimation, you need anywhere between 75 to 100% polyester. The thread that we're using is the Madeira 40 weight, 100% polyester, it's gonna come out great. Before I do that though, I am gonna put a double layer of foam right on top of it so it comes out really good. In order to keep your fingers out of the way, it's a good idea to pin this to the hat so that you don't have to float it. You can either float it or pin it, it's up to you, but this this way, I like to keep my fingers away from the needle. I'm just gonna pin it on both sides and that'll keep it nice and steady for me. Before putting the hat into the machine, I'm gonna use my nail to gently score the foam so that I know exactly where to center the design. That's it. The new design was sent to the machine through Wi-Fi. Let's load it in. The machine is still in embroidery mode. I'm gonna remove it from embroidery mode, select my new design, pick my folder, and there it is. That's a new design that was just sent to the machine. Once I select it, it is part of the machine now, and we have to pick the colors. We're gonna do this in white so that we can get the sublimation all in there. And there are three steps, so we're gonna make it all white. Once we have all our colors selected, we're gonna save and we are ready to go. Always remember to start with a fresh bobbin. We're gonna start by doing the regular trace area to see where the design is gonna rest. Next, we're gonna do the trace design to make sure we can see exactly where the design is gonna rest. Magnifico! All right, we're all ready to go. But first, remember when you're doing puff embroidery, you need to increase the tension of the top thread significantly in order to prevent bird's nest. If you take a look over here, my white thread, you'll notice that the screw is sticking out a little bit more than the others, which means that the density or the tension has been set just right. The only way you're gonna find out is by testing, testing, testing. This is for you, Miss Janet. We just finished the embroidery. I'm going to peel the first layer of foam away and then sublimate on top of that. And I'm also gonna take that opportunity to clean up the puff in any way that I can. I'm gonna trim this up a little bit so that I can put the sublimation right on top of it. So while we're waiting for the heat press to get the temperature, I'm going to cut one of these little squares out. I wanna make sure that I have my heat resistant tape as well as a piece of Teflon. I want the gradient to go from dark red to light red. By turning this around and making sure that it covers the design, I'll be sure that that happens. With some heat resistant tape, I'm gonna tape it across it to hold it down. Miss Janet, look what I have. Let me see. I took your advice, Miss Janet. I did a double puff embroidery with sublimation on top of it. This is what I call a great hat. This is what I was trying to teach you. This is not a boring hat. This is fantastic. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, Miss Janet. Now you only have 499 more to go. 499? I'm never gonna go home. Get to work. I can't believe it, she's so nice on TV, man. If you've enjoyed today's performance, I encourage you to check out our last episode where I made a really cool racing jacket. Applique patches were made as well as regular patches which adorned the jacket. If you're looking for more inspiration for your next embroidery project or want more decorative advice, Check us out on Facebook and join our embroidery and printing business help group. And if you haven't done so already, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for informative and entertaining content. Thank you for staying with me throughout the whole performance. Enjoy your day.